How Kate and William's final act on the King and Queen predicts Meghan and Harry's tragedy. Hello, friends. Welcome to breaking royal news about the notorious hypocritical couple Harry and Meghan Markle on our Kate Middleton and the Queen News version 2 channel. I was scrolling through TikTok for content about the Chelsea Flower Show and Matta of Facts clip came up. She seems to have been on a marathon of believing William and Kate's PR is trying to overshadow the king and queens. But scrolling through the comments, there's occasionally a handful of comments that seem to be objective as opposed to immediately jumping to Team Meghan or Team Kate. This one comment made a lot of sense when I read it and now I can't relocate it. But the gist was that Kate for the final five years of Her Majesty the late Queen's life was set up to be the future queen instead of Camilla. Think about the gold dress, the green dress, etc. The tiara photographs, all of it. They've made Kate regal AF as if the woman needed any help. This comment said that it's clear Charles doesn't really want to be monarch at his age. Think of how over the theatrics both he and Camilla seemed at the coronation. The day I've been dreading comment his mic picked up, the day after his mother passed, and he met with the prime minister. I know he was likely referencing his mother's passing, but he said it right after Liz said, Your Majesty, and his response was, This is the day I've been dreading, or I've been dreading this day. Think about the video of the Wales family during the coronation. I don't think that's their PR going against the palace. Remember that Charles is the king and could shut that down with a snap of his fingers. This is why I believe it's intentional on all ends. They're setting up the Wales family for the longevity that the late queen had, which very much kept the crown alive. I don't think Charles will have a long reign, particularly with other monarchies in Europe practicing abdication as lifespans are extended. My partner teaches AB biology and psych with the doctor of philosophy in memory sciences. I'd have to confirm, but he came to me when he had to teach about Queen Victoria because she was the first high-level person to live as long as she did since apparently the average lifespan was still 35 until this is where I have to double check with him, but he's in class like the late 1800s. We know Queen Charlotte and King George lived equally as long, but Victoria was the one with modern medical records instead of physician's notebooks. The point is, now that monarchs and people are living significantly longer, we've seen turnover in the Dutch, specifying the monarch shouldn't be too old, and Spanish, scandal I know, but still, monarchs thus far and other European royal houses are looking at modernizing similarly. The reality is, there is always going to be a somewhat negative miasma around Charles and Camilla, the whole Tampax gate thing, as well as three people in our marriage. I think Charles had a lot of people interfering in his life, especially when it came to his marriage. Ultimately, Charles should have been allowed to marry Camilla earlier on. I mean, we wouldn't have William and Harry, but Charles probably would have been a lot happier. Hindsight has shown that marriage was probably doomed from the start for multiple reasons. And if Diana had been any less magnetic and media savvy, the collapse of their marriage probably wouldn't have been as damaging to his reputation as it has. And I've always thought that when it came to his sons, especially William, Charles took a firm line with his mother. They did not have to marry properly blooded virgins of the realm, but whoever made them happy and feel supported. Queens Maxima, Letizia, and Rania are all commoners by birth, so he had some solid examples in the royal family orbit. But however it all shook out, there are always going to be people who see Camilla as the other woman, even if Diana was apparently the first person to step out of their marriage. I think it was actually a mistake to make her queen. She could have easily been a duchess or Princess Camilla, much like Philip was Prince Philip and Duke of Edinburgh, and most people would have accepted that. I understand why Charles wanted her as queen, and I legitimately think he is happier and more secure with her by his side. But the optics of her as queen with the specter of young, glamorous Diana hovering over the pair of them are just never going away. 
I do think they gave Catherine a glow up. I remember thinking that the British royal family would have been glad that Meghan was ultimately more comfortable in front of the camera and engagements with her life as an actress because Catherine was clearly not comfortable in the early years of her marriage. I think Catherine has gotten more comfortable though and clearly now that she and William have the official office of Prince of Wales to run as opposed to being under Charles's financial thumb, they are going to run with doing things their way. They clearly understand their appeal and have hired social media staff who are savvy to how it works. And Charles would be wise to just accept the situation as is and let them take the lead. Kate gets more media coverage than Camilla because Kate is more popular. It's not a plot, it's simply a fact. Does anyone really believe that Camilla is scanning all the media outlets and is annoyed if Kate gets footage? William and Kate are younger and more popular. People want to see them out and about. It's just that simple. To read King Charles's comment is ridiculous. How crazy is it that the only way to become the reigning monarch is to wait for the death of your parent? How bittersweet that must be. The late queen was all we knew, and she was the matriarch of that family. It's all they knew for how many years? Of course he was dreading that day. He probably felt completely lost for a moment. I think it's safe to save anyone in direct line of the throne, as well as their chosen partner, is groomed from the get-go. And the king will certainly not step down. He has been prepping for this his entire life. Most people his age would be slowing down, but his role is to be king until he passes away. However, Kate and William are younger and have more energy, and people love William without reservations. The best way to have the monarchy survive is through William, Catherine, and their children, and the lead they are taking. I hope Charles recognizes this, now that he's the only one finally wearing the crown, instead of having a life in limbo. I wonder if Meghan was told about this plan to create longevity around William and Kate, and that's why she went tooth and nail to destroy Catherine, not simply because she was above her rank. Also, consider how heavy-handed William has been in dealing with the Harkles. William and Kate seem to be the primary ones handling them and deciding how to proceed with their coronation involvement, family talks, etc., what do you think about William and Kate surpassing the king and queen to rule the UK before officially taking the throne? Let us know your thoughts below in the comment section. We hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this newsletter. See you in the next videos. Goodbye.